नमस्ते वी आर ट्रैवलिंग विद द मदर टुडे वी विल रीड अ प्रेयर विच इज ऑफ द सेम डेट सो इट्स वंडरफुल मार्च नाइन्थ 1914 सो वेरी ऑफ एंड पीपल आज दिस क्वेश्चन वे आर शुड आई प्रैक्टिस योगा आई रिमेंबर लॉन्ग बैक समबडी वॉज ट्रैवलिंग विद मी ऑन द एयरपोर्ट he asked some senior sadhak that you know should i be in the ashram or outside to practice the yoga and i don't know for what reason but the senior sadhak told him where else can you practice the yoga i didn't find the answer very convincing though i am in the ashram i have lived outside and practice the yoga this yoga can be very well practiced outside this is absolutely misconception that you have to join the ashram or be in pondicherry to practice definitely being here offers you certain advantages that's the other side of the story you have the samadhi most importantly so it's much easier to connect but this doesn't mean that somebody else where cannot practice the yoga yoga depends on what you are within so when mother was asked this question by someone who had come from abroad and he was not sure what i should do be here or the world but again mother says we should not turn into dogmas so he asked the mother mother this question is within me whether i should be here or in the world so the mother says very beautifully she gave a reply the divine is everywhere and the world is everywhere <laughs> the divine is everywhere and the world is everywhere so if you take it like that you will see the world here also so it will depend on and this world is there is to give us the experience needed for growth people have a wrong idea that ashram means now everybody is happily ever after no the real battle begins now <laughs> because uh, outside world what happens is there is a, the difference i'll tell you is this that outside world also truth is there falsehood is there but because the falsehood has kept this world so much in its grip that truth remains stifled and falsehood has its full play you can tell lies you can live lie whole life and nobody will come to know the lie the truth inside your heart here try doing that don't try doing that it will come out because the land of truth just can't help it mother says that don't do anything here which you want to hide from the world because you can't remain hidden it will come out it will come out in one way or the other so accept it turn it into path that's what one has to do don't try to you know do something in a hypocritical way let it things will emerge because they are inside and when they emerge offer purify refine that's the path here so it's very difficult to understand the journey of people who are here is the action of truth having said that the fundamental first truth is that the divine is everywhere and if you forget that then people who live here start creating a division god is here elsewhere god is not there no he is everywhere and the one who carries him inside finds him everywhere this is the fundamental truth and if one is not awakened to this reality then one is still far from actually taking the real steps of yoga they are baby steps okay as sit and meditate and all these are baby steps the first solid step is that you find the presence inside and know that presence to be everywhere that should be the state so here is this prayer march 9th 1914 a good reminder for us those who live for thee and in thee may change their physical surroundings their habits climate milieu but everywhere they find the same atmosphere the other sutra which comes from this is create your own atmosphere the mother speaks of this create your own atmosphere so people say oh i don't like this person's atmosphere that place atmosphere that means they are still susceptible to things which are in the atmosphere of course if you are susceptible better to know that you are susceptible but ideal is you know when mother spoke about contagion she said this world is full of contagion she speaks about the ignorant bad will ignorant good will which becomes a bad will but she says so what will you do she says i am not saying you shut yourself in an ivory tower 
but go everywhere but carrying your own atmosphere that is the way yoga is done in the world it's not like mixing mingling with anyone and everyone it's to stay in that constant state like meera like prahlad that's also they have done yoga in the world only they lived in the world but they carried that atmosphere inside and it is said that so, so powerful was the atmosphere that even if a snake came he would not you know the the it's a legend that it turned into a um, you know garland of flowers but the essence is this that in the atmosphere of such a person even if something comes which is uh, dark it will change because that atmosphere is there i remember one incidence in uh, patiala where we were you know working together a team of us and we wanted to put up a this was i think 1986 or 87 87 yeah so we were putting up a play on uh, from the mother virtues for shirvindo's birthday 15th august 87 but uh, it was that time the peak of militancy and curfew and all these things so um, terrorists don't want to you know that you have shirvindo's birthday and they didn't look at it at shirvindo's birthday shirvindo's birthday is still okay independence day according to them 15th august you can't celebrate so one of them came to my house to threaten he said see i have heard don't do this and uh, i was away on duty my wife was there alone and then she called so i came came there i had come for dinner so he said i said see whatever you want to do you can do we are children of mahakali we are not afraid of doing things what is the right thing we'll do you also come so <laughs> he went away in whatever threatening gesture so people told don't do it call police i said no way that time you know why police when the lord is there that flaming faith so we had the program and six of them came so they kept and you know some people i said just carry on <laughs> pray and do <laughs> they came stood there for some time maybe they got totally confused <laughs> sincerity virtues whatever it be something happened and they went away afterwards we realized one of them the person who had come to threaten he actually became a devotee <laughs> after some years from there when i went to pune for my md after one and a half years i get a letter from this man he said in his broken english he could hardly you know that i am grateful and i am sorry and i apologize then i came to know this man and when shubhin the relics came he did a funny thing he actually ran away with the box saying ki baba ji my baba ji also <laughs> then they had to trace him <laughs> lot of fun things happened but what i am saying is the power of the atmosphere this what she is revealing to us create your own atmosphere it doesn't matter where you are you become the temple you become the lord's presence carrying him rather than being affected by the things around so here she is saying those who live for thee so what is the condition it's not like suddenly i'll go there and you know do something those who live for thee their life is meant for the divine and in the may change their physical surroundings their habits climate milieu but everywhere they find the same atmosphere but the precondition is live for the divine and live in the divine this comes with practice they carry that atmosphere in themselves in their thought constantly fixed on thee so they are thinking of the divine so it doesn't matter whatever comes because these are occult worlds no and it helps but mother has said when if you are in that state even if an assassin comes to you the arm of the assassin will fall away but she said but it should not be that you are living in something and you are you are trembling with fear outside but you are absorbed in that beauty and beatitude everywhere they feel at home for everywhere they are in thy house everywhere they are comfortable why because they own nothing so there is a very nice word in the gita it took me this this word had puzzled me some of the words used to puzzle me one of them was sarva sankalpa sanyasi so if you don't have any will i can understand that without desire but if you have no will how do you act and then i understood what it means sarva sankalpa sanyasi is the divine acts through you impels you not only executes but initiates the action and the second one was aniket so aniket is without a house so i said what does it mean so i had heard the story of lomas rishi who would carry his house on himself it's a very picturesque 
carrying his mat on his head and you would just lie down this is not not a good thing to do you know <laughs> it's okay but i didn't what aniket means without a dwelling place aniket means this that you don't own any house as your own but every house is the divine house and therefore it's your house one of the examples of this is swami vivekananda when he went to america people didn't understand his life even there was some people would complain you know he stays in house sometimes alone some american woman fair woman and he stays there for some days so when it was asked to swami vivekananda he said yes <laughs> what is the problem he was like that yes i stay there i mean his heart is so free but nobody could understand that he is a sanyasi he is a true sanyasi he is unaffected so many people's houses he stayed even then when he went on the yatra in india so that consciousness of the lord in which we start living then every house becomes your house you are comfortable not because of the person but because of the person who is with you with a capital p no longer do they marvel at the novelty unexpectedness picturesqueness of things and countries oh this is a wonderful place oh this house has so many gadgets it's okay fine but that's not the important thing important thing is something else for them it is thy presence that is manifest in all and thy unchangeable splendor which never leaves them is apparent in the least grain of sand so this is the way we have to look at life so we if you travel how travel can become yoga some people say no if you are practicing yoga now don't travel don't go out if you go out live in somebody's house who is a pure vegetarian all these things are there no prescription prescriptions wear this cloth this dress eat this don't eat this but she is simplifying it actually the yoga has been extremely simplified people say it is complicated it's the simplest of things you don't have to find out a cha the place where he is going is there a brahman rasoiya you know, this used to be if a brahmin is going to somebody's house not only the person should be brahmin is the person who is going to cook he should be a brahmin and if he is going to some other you know kshatriya or some place brahmin must cook even if you go to a public party who is the cook if the cook is a brahmin he may be the worst man on earth but brahmin a brahman ke hath ka bana hua khana so brahmins naturally when they started cooking ultimately they started eating so the only thing left about brahmins was their big paunch and uh, unfortunately <laughs> had started getting empty because you know you have a choice <laughs> but that apart the point you know good guys they maintained something still till date but the point is all that is not important people ask in this yoga when vrat upas not important so what is important only one thing is important live always as if you were under the eye of the divine mother carry her presence with you this used to be i have heard this and so beautiful when people come and go away so old time couple of sadhaks used to say this people would feel sad when they are going and things like that so they would smile and say carry mother with you later on i modified this i said you know mother is carrying you that was my modification you are not carrying mother mother is carrying you so wherever you are going she is carrying you it's an experience to be had especially when you come and go you can you know very concretely have this experience the whole earth chants thy praises whole earth not just one place that place in spite of the obscurity misery ignorance through it all it is still the glory of thy love which we perceive and with which we can commune ceaselessly everywhere so she is not oblivious to the glory to the misery to the ugliness and evil she is not blind to that that whole earth chants thy presence is not a sentiment it's a fact of experience so what does she see when she sees all this ugliness she sees the divine love so earlier when i used to come you know you have all kinds of people everywhere so people would often ask, say you know but this person who is living in the ashram 
who is like this, like that. So I said, you know, look at it the other way. Look at what kind of divine love mother brought with her. That she is, you know, literally accepting all kinds of people. And once she accepted completely, it was no more like people could say now, you know, he is this or that. Once accepted, mother says, I feel myself uh, responsible even for those who have revolted and gone away from here. I hold myself responsible for them. Even those whom I have seen for a moment, he is finished for lives. These are her words. For a moment, that's all. He is finished. The seeing is not like now where is she? This is uh, idiocy. How does she see? You will feel it. Swami Sharnanand was blind in both eyes, no? So he was asked, why are you in the darshan queue? Shobinda won't speak and you won't see. He said, I am not going so that I see. What can I see? Even you people have eyes, what will you see? I am going so that she sees me. They, their gaze falls upon me. So when she has seen, that's it, finished after that. She holds herself. Remember that Champaklalji's story where somebody asked, pray to mother, mother may I never forget you. Champaklalji says, what kind of strange prayer is this? How can you forget mother? It is understandable if mother forgets because she meets thousands of people. But how can you forget? She says, but then he says, slowly, slowly I understood. Because mother never forgets. It's so true. She would never forget. You see through her, I don't know how she never forgot people whom she has met and she could recount the entire details. How she was having that. It's not memory. It's through the inner contact that they knew and they carried. So this is the, but look at the steps of the journey through which one has to pass. She could take the whole world as her family because she, wherever she went, she found it to be the divine, divine family. So that is how she could build it here. On that realization basis, basis of that realization, you can make it manifest here, not otherwise. So she sees the divine love everywhere. Oh Lord, my sweet master, all this I constantly experience on this boat, which seems to me a marvelous abode of peace. A temple sailing in thy honor over the waves of the subconscious passivity. This is the perfect image. You know, you have images in the Gita, people often, Upanishad, they will speak about it. Ratha. Now, you know, Many youngsters don't know what is a rath. <laughs> Very difficult to connect, no? Ghoda paanch khode wala rath kaan hai? So see how now modern times, if you see progress, you will not see as ever rath. You will see either a boat or a ship or a aircraft or a spacecraft or a cycle or a scooter or a car. This is how you will see. The image, because it has to be. So she is giving the image of a boat on the subconscious waves. Subconscious passivity which we have to conquer and awaken to the consciousness of thy divine presence. So what is the subconscious passive passivity? It lets us as the mercy of every force. It just allows everything to enter, saying that all is divine, everything is fine. It doesn't resist it doesn't know how to say no. One of the most difficult lessons of life is to learn to say no. Yeah, very important. I have learned it after much pain. You have to know. You have to know how to say no. Because otherwise we'll be prey and slave to everything. Subconscious passivity. That passivity is what is tamas. It ties us to the past habitual patterns. So... She says that it is a temple and there is the subconscious passivity which we have to conquer and bring into it the divine presence. Blessed was the day when I came to know the O oh, ineffable eternity. Now look at the paradox. She is finding the divine everywhere. But she is not saying that it means everything you just mix up and say all is God. Not in that sense. He knows there is ugliness. He knows there is divine love. 
she knows that there is subconscious passivity which has to be conquered but look at the boat becomes the marvelous abode of the divine peace blessed among all days be that day when the earth at last awaken shall know thee and shall live only for thee so the divine presence is everywhere but the tragedy of life is that human beings are not conscious that is also not a tragedy the tragedy is they don't want to be conscious or a still greater tragedy they resist the awakening they deny the presence by which we live that is the tragedy of life so she says the divine presence is everywhere but she is praying aspiring subconscious passivity is carrying the earth so she is aspiring that the day will be blessed when one day man will awaken to the divine presence that contains the secret people often say that you know a day should come when everybody should be happy whatever it means everybody there should be unity no strife yes but how will you bring it about by change of government it won't work by adopting some penal code it won't work reason has tried to organize society on these ways it won't work the only way one can do it is by awakening the divine presence rest will happen automatically for the truth to manifest so she is giving us the clue to be in the world and yet not of the world she is also giving us a clue to change the world the world will change when at least humanity other creatures man is given to be the link at least a sizable section of humanity maybe small in number but doesn't matter one number of people maybe 2000 10000 enough who become conscious of the divine presence wherever they are the rest will be taken care of it didn't need all the monkeys to become man but some monkeys did a sandhi with the lord so grieve shook hands with rama sandhi it needs some monkeys to say that we want to yoke ourselves to the lord and that's enough so that breakthrough and the crossover took place so there is need of such people who can awaken to the divine presence wherever they are and it's they who will change the earth and they we are the ones who are the future of the world so i'll read this prayer again then we stop march 9th 1914 those who live for thee and in thee may change their physical surroundings their habits climate milieu look at the plasticity surroundings habits eating and everything milieu different types of people plasticity that is needed wideness and plasticity develops through travel one thing is for sure because you grow wide you are meeting different kinds of people and plasticity because you know these ideas fixed ideas about food about people about dress everything is smashed but everywhere they find the same atmosphere they carry that atmosphere in themselves in their thought constantly fixed on the a corollary is that wherever you may go you will carry your atmosphere if your atmosphere is full of bad will you will go and stand in front of the lord and think this fellow is thinking about me trying to harm me that other fellow he is a bad guy why because it's our own atmosphere we carry all around so most important is to create your own atmosphere everywhere they feel at home for everywhere they are in thy house no longer do they marvel at the novelty unexpectedness picturesqueness of things and countries for them it is thy presence that is manifest in all and thy unchangeable splendor which never leaves them is apparent in the least grain of sand the whole earth chants thy praises in spite of the obscurity misery ignorance through it all it is still the glory of thy love which we perceive and with which we can commune ceaselessly everywhere she is not giving an advice to mix with freely with here and there she is saying be conscious of the divine presence wherever you are that's all that is required live in that presence and live for that so it doesn't matter then you are perceiving that divine love so because it starts by those who live for thee and in thee o lord my sweet master all this i constantly experience on this boat which seems to me a marvelous abode of peace a temple sailing in thy honor 
over the waves of the subconscious passivity which we have to conquer and awaken to the consciousness of thy divine presence see this is the way to live in a house whose house is it divine house you know ashram 1951 after shubindo's physical departure shubindo's brother or his uh, brother's son one of the brother's son wrote that technically now the ashram is mine all property is in shubindo's name so i can stake claim so everybody was all shaken legally so they went to mother mother this is the letter he wants to come and he stakes claim on the property you know mother's answer she didn't say oh call up find the lawyer in supreme court we'll fight it out how can he do this satyam ev jayate nothing she laughed and said tell him to come and take over it's such such a power in that tell him to come and take over he wants to take over no tell him to come and take over but to her own son she writes you know though things are in my name it was later on transfer but you know actually they all belong to shirbindo it doesn't matter where one is how one is that state one should enter into the important thing is not that half a practice is not enough that i'll go anywhere and everywhere the real thing here is that those who live for thee and live in thee then you carry that atmosphere wherever you go so the that is the fundamental practice and still though things will be there the subconscious passivity the ugliness but they'll find the divine love blessed was the day when i came to know the o ineffable eternity that's what we should remember when did we come to know blessed among all days be that day when the earth at last awakened shall know thee and shall live only for thee people often ask about initiation in this yoga i can say now with all the understanding of shirbindu's yoga and uh, that little practice by her grace that the day you recognize the mother take it that that day is your initiation day you have been initiated that day whatever be that moment otherwise you are reading preparing everything is fine but the day for a moment the mother you are initiated the mother has said this when i say i have initiated someone it means that i have made him know about me that's the difference so she says blessed was the day when i came to know the o ineffable eternity look at the work i know the and ineffable ineffable is someone whom you cannot know yet know that there is the divine presence blessed among all days be that day when the earth at last awaken shall know the and live only for the the day we inwardly intuitively or by the eye of faith know that there is a divine presence within me and everywhere that is the initiation for this yoga and if we don't know that we may read the books we may give lectures we may live in the ashram it doesn't matter we are still apprentices toddlers on the path but the day we know that there is the divine presence within me and there is the divine presence of course if you know everywhere it's fine but at least that yes there is the divine presence within me i may not have contacted it obviously but you know it intuitively and with the eye of faith then it is a blessed day the day when the journey has truly begun in the true sense because after that it's no more that we go alone wherever we go the divine walks with us because he have known he was always there but he was veiled by the ignorance so we didn't know we thought we are alone we need somebody not somebody we need a whole whatsapp group chalo chalna hai but the day you know that the divine walks with you then you can never be alone namaste